Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about sunchokes. Basically I'm going to be covering uh, how I'm going to be thinning them this year uh, so that hopefully they grow better and then I'm going to be uh, documenting the process I go through with that but also with mulching the beds. You know I, I wanted to kind of focus on sunchokes right now uh, as we're going through a bit of a drought around here. The sunchokes seem to be uh, not too phased by it even this early in the season. It's uh, late May uh, in this zone 6A climate. So we'll be going through kind of how we can care for and maintain the sunchokes while some of the, the other projects uh, that I've been going through have kind of been put on hold, such as planting other crops like, uh, you know, beans, sorghum, and things like of that nature as we wait for uh, hopefully the next rain that will come soon. And even if that doesn't happen soon, the sunchoke beds uh, will be thinned, they'll have the grass removed out of there, and they'll be mulched uh, to help kind of retain that moisture and protect it from the heat. Uh, of the sun. So let's get right into it. Alright, so when it comes to thinning sun chokes, basically what we want to do here is we want to look at the plants. Alright, because we have a whole row and um, some of these plants, some of these shoots are kind of small and young. Uh, these, A lot of these can probably be uh, thinned out Um, also, if certain ones have a bunch of aphids on them, those can also be prioritized to be thinned out. This particular one isn't too bad, but you can kind of see that aphid uh, and a few of those daughter aphids there. Um, <clears throat> but like others, if they're cover if the top is covered in aphids um, that's sucking a lot of energy out of the plant and those shoots can also be uh, thinned out so so anyway what I may do here is try to thin out like keep maybe three or four or so of these uh, shoots in a clump and then thin out the others in between and then have another clump here and then thin out the others in between and then continue that process just so this doesn't grow up and become covered in sun chokes and it starts kind of out competing itself and competing for nutrients and sunlight and everything like that and it kind of decreases yield over time so uh, we just want to try to keep that balance as much as possible So basically any sunchoke shoots that are looking anemic or lighter green or smaller leaves or uh, covered in aphids, those will be kind of removed uh, and then I'll try to form them into the remaining plants into clumps of like three, four, five or so plants spaced out between each other, uh, maybe about uh, eight or a foot or so, uh, eight inches or a foot or so apart all 
All right, so now that I have gotten the uh, weeded out some of the grass here and I have thinned out the sun chokes as well, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down a grass clipping mulch and that will help to, because we're going through a bit of a drought right now um, for a few weeks. So um, the mulch is gonna help keep the water in the soil, help cool the soil, you know, keep the intensity of the sun uh, um, from heating it up and causing more plant stress and, and such and then it'll also kind of be a bit of a weed barrier as well so i wanted to thin out these sun chokes because in previous years i've had pretty good harvests but last year uh i didn't you know the sun chokes have been so prolific and, and stuff and i didn't uh really thin them out and so the plants kind of grew a little a uh, little thinner more anemic and, and then when i harvested the tubers they were smaller and not quite as bountiful as they were in other years so uh, I'm trying to trying to go about the sun choke maintenance this year a little bit differently um, and uh, thinning a lot more intentionally um, and aggressively and you want and I want to try to do this early in the season so that the plants not uh, investing or wasting too much growth in shoots that are just going to get thinned out so that's what I'm doing now so I'm going to lay down uh, some of these grass clippings here uh, and uh, I'm going to plan on doing successive layers throughout the course of the next few weeks or months or so. Uh, the grass clippings will break down fairly quickly, maybe not so much if we don't get any rain, but uh, <clears throat> they, uh, they will break down and then you'll have uh, more decomposed grass clippings on the bottom. And then on the top layers, you'll have the uh, drier grass clippings, which will kind of, which will, uh, you know, then work their way down as you do successive layers over time. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about mulching it too thickly right now. Uh, over time, that thickness can kind of be developed and maintained as needed. Uh, I don't want to make it too thick too for uh, voles to get in um, and also if it does rain a little bit I want that rain to be able to get in down into the soil profile and I don't want like the mulch to, to wick a lot of that off or um, take it up in its own microbial breakdown process and, and such like that. So I want to protect the soil but I don't want to inhibit uh, water infiltration uh, especially if we just get like a short shower at some point. Um, and you know that's all that there is for a little while to go down in, into the soil so I just want to make sure that um, I'm being mindful of that The greener the, and fresher the grass clippings are, the more nitrogen content they have. Um, and if that can be washed down uh, with watering or with a rain right after application, uh, some of that nitrogen can be made available to the plants. Um, otherwise, as they brown, that nitrogen is um, used up, uh, you know, it, uh, and it may be released back up, volatized back up into the atmosphere. Um, whatever it may be um, so you can kind of tell the brown grass clippings the green ones are on top the brown ones are in the middle they're damper uh, that's where the microbial breakdown has uh, been transforming uh, the form of nitrogen um, so the drier green grass clippings probably have more nitrogen available um, All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video about sun chokes. Uh, hopefully you can kind of come away with it with a little bit more of an understanding of how we can, uh, um, you know, care for uh, these plants early in the season and um, even during a drought, how we can hopefully 
help uh, make these plants even more resilient and, uh, and healthy so they can still grow well and strong and hopefully produce a uh, pretty solid yield. So with that, thank you so much for checking out this video and I hope to see you in a future video. Take care.